hi, my name's Heather, and this is going to be my video assessment part two. Here's my badge. Hi, I'm Weston Ashesky. I'm also a nursing student, and I give consent to Heather to be in this video. Now we're going to do a 360 room tour. So I'm gonna start the assessment. I'm gonna walk in the room. My hands are all nice and washed. Introduce myself. Hi, Weston. My name's Heather. I'm a student nurse. Hi. Hi, and I'm going to look for two patient identifiers. So um, what's your name? Uh, Weston Anastasky. And what's your date of birth? Uh, March 5th, 1998. All right, check the wristband. Make sure everything is accurate. So I'm gonna be like Weston. All right, so today we're gonna to just do an assessment of your heart sounds, arms, and legs. So basically kind of half of a head to toe assessment. And I'm going to um, give the patient privacy as needed and I'm going to make sure that I'm gloved up as necessary and I'm going to ask you about the patient's past medical history. So do you have a history of congestive heart failure? No. Deep vein thrombosis? No. Blood clots? No. All right and now I'm going to start the actual assessment but before I do that I'm going to show you where I'm going to auscultate. I'm going to maybe adjust the camera. Is it facing you? It is facing you. I'm getting closer. All right, so first I'm going to look for the second rib. All right, and this is the second intercostal space and that is the aortic region. And that is in the right sternal border. And then I'm gonna move right across and I'll look for the second rib. So here's the second intercostal space and this is going to be on the left sternal border and this is um, the pulmonic or pulmonary area. I'm going to move one rib space down and that is the herbs point and that is usually where the heart murmurs are found and this is going to be in the third intercostal area in the left sternal border as well. And we're going to move one down. This is the fourth intercostal area and this is the tricuspid area. It is in the left sternal border as well. And lastly, we got the fifth intercostal space on the left um, area, but it's in the midclavicular region and this is going to be the mitral area. And yeah, so now what I'm going to do is auscultate in all of these areas. All right, so I noticed that there were definitely S1 and S2 sounds. S1 sounds were the loudest at the apex, while S2 sounds were loudest at the base of the heart. Um, I didn't notice any murmurs, which is indicative of normal finding, but if I did, they would be located in herbs point. And the rhythm was regular throughout. So now I'm gonna be just auscultating in one area. I'm going to auscultate for 30 seconds. All right, so I counted 38 beats. I'm gonna multiply that times two. 38 times two would be 76, 76 beats per minute. So that falls within the normal ranges of 60 to 100 beats. 
and um yep it sounded elastic and the rhythm was normal and i didn't know any abnormal murmuring of any sort so now i'm going to move on to assessing weston's arms weston is it okay if i touch your arms yes all right so i'm just gonna look at them and just palpate lightly So upon inspection, I'm not noticing any inflammation of any sort, and um, there appears to be no sign of redness or any lesions. And the color, I'd say, is about a tannish beige with some pink undertones. So now, I'm busting. I'm gonna just do hand grasp. I want you to just grasp onto my fingers right here. All right, you can release. And the hand grasp was strong and equal bilaterally. So now, Weston, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have you lie down on this. Normally this would be a hospital bed. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to inspect Weston's legs. There's a general observation. Mm, so the legs appear to be tannish beige with pink undertone and color. I'm not noticing much color variation and it is a little darker at the knees right here. And um, the legs are symmetrical, the skin appears to be intact, there's no wounds of any sort, and hair, there is a moderate amount of hair, but the hair is distributed evenly throughout both legs. And for venous patterning, there appears to be none, so there's no spider veins, no varicose veins. So next I'm going to look for lesions, so I'm going to check for primary lesions first. Primary lesions would be something like moles, freckles, or birthmarks. And while I'm looking, Weston actually does not seem to have any primary lesions, but if I were to find some, I would be explaining the size, shape, location, and distribution. Next, I'm going to check for secondary lesions, which would be something like tattoos or scars. And actually, Weston does have one scar right here. It's a little reddish in color. I don't know if you can see, but yep, that is a scar. And you can make sure my face is in the frame. And <laughs> um, the scar, I'd say the size is about the size of a penny um, location. It is right underneath his knee near the lower portion of his leg. And um, shape, it's circular. In distribution, there's only one scar present. It's not scattered anywhere. There's just one right here. And last but not least, we're going to get vascular lesions. Vascular lesions would be something like ecchymosis or bruises. And I... Let's see. I'm not noticing any bruising anywhere. There appears to be no sign of vascular, le vascular lesions in Weston, but if there were, I'd be noting the size, shape, location, and distribution once again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to palpate for any edema first. Start a little more up here. All right, I did not notice any edema on both legs. So there's no inflammation bilaterally. And next I'm gonna check for temperature and moisture with the dorsal aspect of my hand. So the temperature was warm, but it got cooler as I went deep down to the toes, which is a normal finding. And the skin was dry, there was no excessive moisture, which is also a normal finding. So now I'm going to move on to flexion. So Weston, I'm going to have you just press down on my hands like a gas pedal. Alright, you can stop. So this is going to be, what I'm testing here is the plantar flexion. And his plantar flexion was strong, and um, it was strong bilaterally and equal. Next, I'm going to test his dorsiflexion. 
So lesson, you can just point your toes upwards to the sky. Yep. All right, you can stop. So his dorsiflexion was also strong and it was equal bilaterally as well. So now I'm gonna test pulse. First, I'm gonna test the posterior tibial pulse. So we'll get it kind of almost where the inner ankle is. Right? All right, so I would grade the posterior tibial pulse two plus and the characteristic was elastic. Now I'm gonna move on to the dorsalis pedis pulse. All right, I would give that a grade of two plus as well and um, characteristic was elastic as well. So now I'm gonna be checking Weston's legs for any ulcerations. I'm gonna lift up his leg and make sure to check every surface. And when I'm checking for ulcerations, I wanna make sure that I'm looking in between the toes and on the heels as well. And upon inspection, Weston does not seem to have any ulcerations on his legs. And last but not least, I'm gonna check for, um, sorry, give me a second. I'm gonna check for ulcerations and I'm sorry. Ulcerations and I think um oh yeah, sensory alterations, my friend. Weston, have you experienced any numbness or tingling? <clears throat> no. Alright, on your legs? None. No. No? Alright, so he does not have any sensory alterations. And after this, um, I'm going to adjust the patient for comfort, make sure he's covered with a blanket. I'm going to make sure the bed is the lowest position, side ribs are up times two, and then make sure the collet is within reach, and I'm going to document my findings. And yep, that concludes it.